Hey y'all. So this is the recap for Ready to Love. So the men met up and nephew Tommy let them know that they will all be going on a mini vacation to the Blue Ridge Mountains, which I already told y'all before, that was the same place that the cast of Love and Marriage Huntsville went. It's a really nice place, but I'm just like, okay, did y'all have like good package deals or something to where you was like, oh, everybody just gonna go there. Like, what is going, <laughs> what is going on? It is a really, really nice place. I wouldn't mind going, but yeah, it's really, really nice. But I was just like, why is everybody going to the same place? Uh, anyway, um, so when everybody got there, you know, they settled into the rooms and they were walking around and, you know, eventually people were getting some food started. So Darren walked up to Tondi and was wondering like what was like her specialty dish if she can cook. And I think she said Mississippi pot roast or something like that. I have, y'all, I have had that on my list of things to try because I heard that is like the most tender roast because normally when I have roast, it ain't tender like that. It's not to the degree that I've heard that if you do that roast the way it's supposed to be done, it's amazing. But yeah, I was like, ooh, okay, girl, you cook then. <laughs> Being from Detroit, cooking, you know, that don't make a difference, but I just want to say that. But anyway, so they were talking, and I was like, oh, Lord. <laughs> um, so you can tell that Ashima is still very much so in her feelings, and she and Darren, you know, had it out a little bit. Where she was like, you know, I don't like how you texting people and doing all this other stuff. And I didn't even know that you were having all these interactions with Tondi until I was at the table. And when it was doing, talking about who we was going to eliminate and then Tondi brought it up. I didn't even know you was fooling with her. So, it's crazy because before they even got to that part of the conversation, while he was in there in front of Tondi or Alexis, I think it was Tondi. He said out of his own mouth that Ashima is his number one. And so stuff happened later on and it's just crazy. Y'all, <laughs> she's, she's definitely in her feelings and I get why. Y'all, Alexis and Brent are like talking. And Brent put his hand on like Alexis's shoulder. Y'all, London is over in somebody's corner like looking over like cutting his eye over there doing the most. And I'm like... What is that supposed to do? You cutting your eye over there. What is that supposed to do? That's not showing that you have interest in her. That's not showing that you're going to, you know, set out to prove that you should be the one that she should have interest in. It's just showing that you mad in your feelings. Get out your feelings and get over there. But no, you just want to look at somebody <laughs> in the corner of your eye like, wow, why are you cutting your eyes at people? Anyway. Oh, you could just tell he was having a somewhat jealous moment. Boy, get somewhere. Y'all, Darren went outside. And they were, like, around a fire pit. And, like, all the guys were there. So, Darren went outside. He starts venting about everything that had just happened between he and Ashima. And he was just like, I don't understand why she acting like this. Because I told her off rip that... I'm never trying to be like my daddy. And I tell people stuff up front. I ain't gonna lie to you. You gonna know what it is. Because my daddy used to cheat on my mom. But like he went all the way. Like he was pouring out. Like he was really pouring out his soul. And he was just like, I don't understand why she acting like this. And then Mario chimed in and was like, man, you know, I'm trying to get Reva to open up and let her walls down. And she just won't open up, man. I'm just like, why? why why <laughs> y'all so the ladies are talking and then Reva brings up the fact that Mario has mentioned that she needs to let her walls down so Tandy of course is in the room and they're talking and um, all that good stuff y'all before I continue I have to let y'all know that I really loved that top that Reva had on it was really cute it had like sheer elements throughout. it was really cute like her her chest was sitting. I was like, yeah, whatever top that was was really cute to me. Now, as far as her hairstyle, I can't tell if I like it or not because it's a 27 piece, a random wig, or I don't know. Because I, if I can't see the part, like when you wear these wigs and stuff, I don't know what's going on. I want to know what's happening. You know what I'm saying? Like this right here, you can tell this is raggedy crochet right here. And like nobody's been able to tell that my whole head ain't crocheted. This is just... 
this is a little piece, this is my hair crocheted on and then this is wig that I made and I I just want to see like I, if you're going to have hair like that I want to see the part I want to see how it look like that's why when I said what I said about um, Ashima's wig I thought it was cute and it is that bob was cute the way it was part all of that was cute and I'm going to get on that later too but I don't know but I really like that top um yeah Cause I can't, it, I I hate not being able to tell if somebody, I guess because it's on, it's on TV. That's why I hate not being able to tell like what kind of part going on. Even if it's a twenty seven piece, I've seen some really cute twenty seven pieces, but I just want to see the part. Like I got to see the part or the, the um flip over method or so. I need to see some. Y'all, I'm sorry, that's the hair person in me. I can't help. Y'all, anyway, so they talking, and Reva, you know, and you know. Tandy are supposed to be friends, right? So Tandy was like, you know, I've noticed that you and I have the same interest in men and we, we've, you know, run into this roadblock before. And so, you know, I'm the type of person that if someone tells me that I have a stronger connection with somebody else that just so happens to be my friend, I'm going to back off. I'm going to be done because I'm like, oh no, that's my friend. Let me go on by my business. And so, Reva looking at her like, um, I hear you, but, you know, we ain't friends. I consider us to be strong associates. So, Tanya looking like, what you mean? Because I've known you for five years, and Reva's like, um, that don't mean nothing to me because we don't talk. We don't do anything. We just happen to know each other, and that's it. Like, I guess all they do is whenever they see each other, in the Atlanta area and wherever else they say hey and went on going by their business. I, I don't know. Y'all, it got, I mean, it turned into a whole discussion. And I agree with certain points that both the ladies made. And other people noticed some of the things that I feel as well, which is like when people say associate, a lot of time it's just like, I don't really fool with you like that. But, you know, I know of you, but I don't really fool with you like that. And I get that friend is supposed to be more intimate. But apparently, Tanya's like, look, either you're my friend or, or you're not. Like, I don't do the in the in between, which I guess associate kind of is. So she was just like, nah, I ain't here for that. So, y'all, it was just a lot. And so Tanya was just looking like, I'm glad I know what it is now. And, you know, I can take this information and go where I need to go with it because... I was thinking that we were something else, but apparently we not, so I know what to do. And I was like, yes, girl, y'all, anyway... <laughs> She and Divine, meaning Reva, they are friends. And so Tanya was taken aback and was looking like, how are you going to say y'all friends when I've known you for five years? And so she was like, she and I talk every day. Like, we talk every day, several times a day. That's why we are friends. Like, we actually have interaction. We are cool with each other. Like, we really like each other. Like, we have interaction. You and I don't have any interactions. Y'all, it's bad. Like, I can't. <laughs> so... Not long after that happened, the men came from outside, and so Ashima was in the kitchen cleaning up. And so they was like, oh, they left you in here to clean up by yourself? She was like, oh, no, y'all, this is, like, my sanctuary. And so they were like, she was just like, y'all missed the drama. And they were looking like, drama? What you mean? So she literally said, like, two or three sentences, and then Mario was like, yeah, let me go. <sighs> Started trying to tell them about what was going on. And once he heard Reva's name come up and Tanya's name come up, he was just like, nah, let me go find her. I got to go talk to her. So he went to Reva's room. Reva was in her room already talking to Divine because she was just like, I ain't got time for this. And, you know, she was still talking about what friendship means to her and all that. So he knocked on the door. He came in. So he was trying to get an understanding of what was going on because... Apparently what has happened is Reva called Tandy and was like, girl, you better watch your back. And she was saying that in reference to Mario because, you know, I, how I want to say it. I, I'll talk about it later because it gets more in depth later on. But, yeah, so he was like, you know, I heard some things. I didn't know what was going on. So she was like, you know, she thinks we friends and we not. And, you know, I did say what I said. And so, like, it just got to a point. She was just like, look, I'm tired. Like, hey, I'm tired. And... He was just, like, done with her. He got up and walked out of the room. I was like, ah. <laughs> Y'all, so then immediately after that, he rolled up on Tanya and was like, you know, are you all right? 
I know how you are when it comes to friendships. And so she was like, yeah, I'm good. I, you know, I just know where it is. I know what it is now. And so she was like, you know, basically like the gloves are off. She called me and told me that I need to, you know, watch my back when I'm dealing with you and, you know, all that. And so she was like, you know, she want to take it there. We could take it there. And then in her confessional, she was like, I can't believe that Reba is trying to downplay our friendship over penis. All because the penis is involved. And that's literally how I feel like it's going to because it's like, girl, you're doing too much. Like, and he ain't even worth all that. Like, you do, <laughs> you're doing too much. Anyway, y'all, Ashima does not respect Darren, and she feels as though he is straddling the fence. And, I mean, I can kind of see that, but at the same time, like, girl, you put all your eggs in one basket from day one. Like, you should have been mingling with everybody else, but I don't think nobody else was here for her like that. Like, I don't know. I think he just might be a breast man or something. So, she lucked up. Y'all, um, I don't know if y'all heard about this, but I heard about it literally less than an hour after I posted my last uh, recap of this. So apparently, and I ain't even like I ain't even cared. <laughs> I ain't even cared enough to watch it or see if there was anything out there to read on it. But apparently, <coughs> excuse me. Apparently, Cat Williams and Ashima have some kind of connection or had some kind of connection. I don't know if they used to date. It was something. But it came up in my um, recommendations, um, notifications rather, because I am subscribed to a channel entitled Comedy Hype. They have a lot of amazing content on there. And she was on there. And as soon as I saw, I saw her name or I saw her face first, I said, what is she doing on here? And I was like, oh, she is supposed to be a comedian. But then I saw her name. I saw Cat Williams' name. And I was like, what? I don't know. Y'all, I, I didn't even, <laughs> I clicked on the video and I paused it. And I went directly to the comment section. Because I'm like, well, maybe she been out there. And I just didn't know. Y'all, I scrolled down the comments. The comment section was like, um, I don't know who she is, but okay. I didn't know the situation happened, but okay. Like, nobody cared. Like, everybody was like, I don't know what's going on. And I don't even care. I don't know. I don't know if they had a situation going on or whatever, y'all. I didn't even bother to click on the... I was dying laughing at the comments because nobody knew who Ashima was. Only, like, one person from the time that I saw it because I saw it within that first 45 minutes after they posted it. Only one person said, oh, I only know her because she's on Ready to Love. Like, that's the only thing I know her from. <laughs> I was like, oh, gosh, don't nobody know you, girl. What is going on? I don't know. Maybe they just know her in her element as far as her being a comedian, but I had never in life heard of her. Like before um, Tiffany Haddish popped, how she's popped now, I heard of her years and years before. Like there are various people that I've heard of years and years before, before we've seen them come out of somewhere. But her, I had never heard of her. So, I mean, that does, I'm not trying to discredit her. I'm just saying I, I don't know nothing about her. I ain't never heard of her before. That's why she, she said she was a comedian. I was like, girl, what? Okay. But, yeah, y'all um, go look up Comedy Hype and type in Ashima's name, and you should be able to see what, it, what it's about because it has something to do with Cat Williams. And I was like, what? I don't know if he tried to block her from uh, doing what she was doing. And I, I don't know. Maybe they was dating. I don't know, y'all. I don't know. I ain't, I didn't bother to click on it. I don't know if I'll be up to ever clicking on it because I just didn't care enough. <laughs> anyway, y'all. <sighs> Let's see. Basically, you know, he was just like, I just want to know what's going on as to why you always are coming at me as of late. Like, I'm doing something to you. I felt as though I drew my line in the sand to be like, look, Ashima is my number one, and I said that in front of Tandy. So she was just like, you know, yeah, you did do that, but no. Nah. He was like, well, I felt like that was enough, especially in that moment, for you to really know where I stand with you. And so she was like, man, uh-uh, I ain't got time. Like, she kept, like, <sighs> she kept, like, being in her feelings. And he was just like, I'm really trying to understand what you're talking about. Like, what's really going on? And so she was like, look, I just don't want to be played. Every time I look up, I've been through stuff before. I'm not trying to get played. 
And I don't want you to be sitting up here trying to make it seem like you're going to be with me and you're not. And she kept saying that trust is earned. And so he was like, well, where I'm from, you get trust right up front. And then as people show you who they are and it starts to diminish from there. You can't just be like, well, I got to trust you. Like, I mean, I see both sides on that too. But, um, yeah, she was just like, I have trust issues and trust has to be earned. And so they basically kind of like talked that out. They smoothed that over and they actually kissed. I like that bob that she got. And I like the one that they've been showing um, this time in the confessional. It is like a light beach wave. I don't know if it was the same one, but it was cute. It's like kind of asymmetrical. And it's kind of like... Kind of like, the, no, no, it's like a bigger wave, but it's kind of like somebody like kind of bumped it and it's like messy, but it's not, y'all, that bob, it, <laughs> that bob is everything. Now that bob is cute. That's cuter than the one I was telling y'all about like what last week, but yeah, um, Alexis does not know how to play spades. And so she is having some one-on-one -on -one time with Brent and they trying to act like they have a connection and they actually kissed and she was like I felt the connection I felt the connection now I don't know if it was editing but after that part happened they gonna pan over and show London like he at the counter in the kitchen somewhere and then looked over at them again I'm like are they in there he might have been right there in that moment but he looked over again I was like oh my gosh y'all anyway so London is outside at the fire pit by himself later on and it's actually nighttime this time and so Mario apparently, you know, realized he was out there. So he went out there to go see what was going on with him. And so he was like, man, you know, I have two connections and I'm trying to see where everybody, you know, go fall. And he's just like, look, I don't want to get played. Like everybody looking like, I mean, who wants to get played? I get it. But this is about to be the end of the show, sir. I'm going to need for you to make up your mind or you ain't going to have nobody that you go go home with try to have no kind of connection with because everybody getting tired and so Mario was like look I feel like since you have the strongest connection with Divine and she's the one you've always had the strongest connection with that's the one you should ride with because he's just looking like man Alexis out here getting her life with everybody else and not me not knowing that you know he's doing the same thing that he did to Divine which was he was being so you know um, com comical and all that stuff all the time and never being too serious and not really letting anybody know where your head is at so that they can know how to move so we, we don't like stuff like that you need to let us know what you're thinking you need to let us know something so we we want to know if we actually have a dog in the fight sir that's the way that go we don't want to sit up here and be like oh let me hope he still want me let me hope like no and then like I said earlier in this video, he has not been showing and proving that he has the slightest interest in her outside of cutting his eye over there. And then, it's interesting to me that every time we look up, that he's showing that he's jealous in a sense of what's going on over there with Alexis. But I ain't seen him cut his eye over at Divine. I ain't seen him over there with Divine. Like, why are you here? I don't understand what's going on, sir. So... I can't. So Mario is talking about, um, you know, like I said, if he's talking about that, you know, since she's the strongest one, the strongest connection, you need to roll with her. And Brent is making connections with both of his connections. So, sir, he probably going to get one of them and you ain't going to get nothing there in one of them because both of them going to be like, you toyed with both of us, so I don't have time. Divine seemed like she ain't here for nothing. Hopefully, she won't be desperate enough to fall for the, oh, okay, well, since he backed off Alexis because she didn't want her no more, now he want me, let me go ahead and, you know, bust it wide open for him and just be like, okay, it's all right that you had all your attention over there. It's okay. You can come back. Come, come on back. Come on back. No, I don't think she's going to be here for I hope she ain't going to be dumb enough to be here for that. So, anyway, um... But yeah, Brent decided that he wanted to have a one-on-one -on -one with Divine and let her know like what was going on and because he has decided that he really wants to focus on Alexis. And she actually respected that. And she said to him, like, look, I respect that. I understand that. You have been the only guy who has been consistent. You have not played with people. You have not gotten people in their feelings. 
to the point of where they need to wonder like what's going on with you like you've been the only one who's real and you're the one who seems like you've written a book on the path to you know <laughs> uh, what's the name of the show being ready to love and I was like girl you're doing too much on that but okay but yeah, he was like, "Look, I'm just gonna focus on my connections with my connection with Alexis." And like I said, she respected that. Y'all, Reva rolled up on Mario while he was outside talking to London and was like, "You know, can I have a minute with Mario?" So she started talking to him and basically was like, "You know, if you don't want me, then don't talk to me." And went on was like, "You know, um, you know, it's apparent that you have a stronger connection with Tyndy, so you go ahead and do that over there." And, you know, she basically is throwing the towel in. And he's just looking like, dang, every time I want her to give more of herself, she gives less. So, I'm like, bro, you just going on. Like, she was like, I just think you and Tanya should be together. And I guess that conversation that they had in the house earlier kind of made her feel like, yep, I'm done. I'm not finna fight over him. He like her more than me anyway. I, every time a situation came up where he had to choose between me and her, he ended up choosing her. So, I mean, you you don't have a dog in this fight, girl. You should have been just exited stage left on your own anyway. I I mean, after you were not here with, for Karen no more, it, it, there was no hope. I don't feel like there was any hope for you. So, I mean, it just is what it is. Y'all, London rolled up on Alexis. And, you know, he was like, you know, I just want to know if you feel the same way. That I feel about you and all this other stuff. Y'all, Alexis is just looking like, bruh. Why you want me to sit up here and be pining after you when you got all these random connections going on? You doing the most. You're not showing and proving what you say that you want to convey to me. I don't see none of what you saying. You ain't got no actions behind your words. I'm not really trying to hear whatever you're talking about. She gave... um him an example. She was like, when I went and got dressed and, you know, I freshened up and came back up, Brent was the only man to say, wow, you know, you look really nice. You look really beautiful. And nobody else say nothing to her. He ain't say nothing to her. Maybe he looked at her and did like the little thing that a lot of men do, a bit his lips and was like, mm, that's fine snack over there. I don't know. But she paid attention and was very much so receptive and here to the fact about, as, as far as um, Brent complimenting her and seeing her and doing the things that people do when they are supposedly you know interested so she was just like um yeah okay it's like she heard him out but she was just not here for the conversation and he was just looking like people need to just wait and be patient and watch the stories play out and i'm like bro what did you do this is the end this is the end. I'm like, you don't understand. This is the end of the journey. What is happening? We down to the final fold. What is going on? What is going on? Y'all. So you can just tell she ain't here for him. She done like her laughs aren't like hearty and whatever no more. She just be like, <laughs> like trying not to be rude and just sitting there looking at him like, giving him stone face. It just got to the point where she was like, yeah, I need to go get some fresh air. <laughs> she ain't here for him no more, y'all. Y'all, Divine came out and, you know, like basically everybody eventually ended up out there at the fire pit. So they started talking about London. Y'all, it got rough. It was, it was rough. I said, Lord, <laughs> I just cannot. I'm just sitting there like, oh my gosh. It just got to the point where while London was saying everything, he was saying Alexis was making these faces and she was sitting right next to Brent. And she was looking. Because at first he had his whole head turned. I was like, who is that? And I had to realize it was Brent. So she kept making these crazy faces and her eyes, she kept looking like, and like, like, she kept making these random faces, right? It just got to the point where he was like, um, yeah, you want to go for a walk? <laughs> he was tired. He was tired. Like, everybody was tired. Brent ain't trying to hear that. He ain't trying to hear nothing. Alexis ain't trying to hear nothing. Because she is trying to focus on her connection with Brent. Y'all, I just can't. <laughs> like, she really kept looking at him like, what? 
Y'all, Divine is tired. She came out there. She was just like, look, I ain't got time for this. And, you know, nobody wants to. I mean, I think Alexis or Brent was like, nobody wants to hear that you're number two to somebody, which is true. <coughs> Excuse me. And, you know, they, they went on about their business, right? Y'all, Tanya and Ashima came out, like, last out of everybody. Because, like, people came in waves, kind of. But Tanya and Ashima came out, like, completely last and missed the drama that had just went down. And so they were like, um, what's going on? Did we miss something? And Alexis or somebody was like, no, Divine was like, nah, you ain't miss nothing. You missed nothing at all. Absolutely nothing. I was like, oh, my gosh. Because London is not living up to the expectations He's not living up to nothing. He ain't putting his best foot forward. He is not trying, in my opinion. Like, he just out here. He just looking like, okay, who gonna come to Big Daddy at the end of the night? It's like he's sitting back. In my opinion, it just seems like he's sitting back waiting for somebody to just do the most over him. And it's like, you know how most women are. We are how we were back in the day. We wait for y'all to come and act like you want us and you chase us. You know what I'm saying? Reva was the only one out here being desperate. And I mean, not necessarily being desperate. I'm just saying the way she went about some of, some of this stuff, she just was like, okay, let me just throw my hat in the ring. Let me, let me, let me do this because I'm going to go home if I don't, you know, secure no dates because wasn't nobody asking her out. So she had, that's why I later, earlier in the season, she had to ask people out because wasn't nobody coming to ask her out outside of Carrie and that been done. Y'all. So, London pulled up and tried to interrupt Alexis and um, Brent's conversation. Brent was like, nah, bruh, I ain't got time. You finna disrespect me like this. And I think Alexis actually said, you know, yeah, because he was like, you know, Alexis, can I talk to you for a minute? So she was like, yeah. And he was like, nah, bro, we, we in the middle of talking. You ain't finna do this. Y'all, <laughs> it's just, it's, it's crazy. So that's where it left off. And, you know, nobody went home this week because they're still up there. There have been no eliminations. So I don't know what's going to happen next week, but it's been a lot going on. Anyway, I hope y'all enjoyed this review. Y'all let me know down in the comment section what you thought about the show. And, you know, if I left something out, y'all let me know what it was. And we'll talk about it down in the comment section. I hope y'all have a good one, and I will see y'all later.